a huge... I mean, look at this, what's in front of us. Tell us what's here. Well, I'm having a beer, first of all, because... Uh, oh, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do steam, steam prawns in beer, yeah. first of all. So we just take some, some beer, not lager. Uh, put that in the pan. We'll put that on there. We'll hopefully turn that down a little bit, so... That'll go in there. And then we're going to steam a selection of prawns. I've got in here the standard prawns that you get in the supermarkets, these ones. But right now, at the moment, these you'll be able to get hold of. Chuck, come into the last of the season, really. These are mailer prawns. These are amazing. Comes from Cornwall. I uh, watched a... Uh, I watched a programme the other day. Um, mm, mm. And uh, it was about the Cornish fishing industry and the, the guys that go out fishing um, in... I think it was the Fowl in Cornwall for the oysters and yep. for the... And, um, Queen scallops, and yeah. that's a decimated industry because of what happened in Brexit. And Do you know what? As much as we can support them, don't use these. Use the other ones that we've got over here. These, as much as we support the amazing produce this country has to offer, and we're, we're an island. We're surrounded by the most amazing seafood, and we end up exporting most of it, particularly things like longestines. You know, we, we export over ninety-five percent of they longestines gorgeous, that we catch those. still. Yeah. And then when we're sat in Spain and Portugal and that kind of stuff, enjoying all that amazing seafood. If, Remember, a lot of it still comes from the UK. So wow. this is a nice... So I've got the prawns cooking away nicely. All you do is just put the prawns in like that. That's cooking away just nicely. I'm just going to turn that up. That's just cooking away just in the beer. So all you've got in there is the prawns steamed in beer. How long do they take to steam? Probably about three, four minutes. Not long. more than that. Um, so nice, and then what it? I've got in here is I've got cider and I've got gluten-free flour. Right. So gluten-free flour, cider, salt and pepper. And then this, this is a base to cook any fish, any seafood, to fry it. It's oh my God, amazing. Can you hear that? Now, crunch. if you're gluten intolerant, what you have to do is you have to change the oil. So if you've got a fryer at home uh, and somebody is gluten intoler intolerant, oh. you've actually got to lose the, lose the oil and put fresh in because the oil can sometimes contain the leftover bits of remnants of gluten as well. So it's very important. Mm, right. A lot of fish, fish and chip shops, for instance, will have a separate fryer. We have in the restaurant a separate fryer for... for Gluten fried food, that kind of stuff. So you just take the, the fish. I've got in here some monkfish, but any fish like that. Oh, that's just wow. carefully, incredible. Carefully. Very, very hot oil, but this batter goes beautiful and crisp. It's amazing. It holds crisp. Why would you want to batter anything in anything other than that? That's like the ultimate batter. Well, a lot of people do beer batters and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with it, but if you get it right, it's really good. But a lot of people can get it quite wrong, and, and the beer batter can be very stodgy and heavy. Mm. This is much, much lighter, and you just leave it. It's, it tastes amazing, doesn't it? Uh, unbelievable. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, it's well, it's that's I, the best batter I've, I've ever I've got to had. give a shout out to Nathan Outlaw, who, who I, I borrowed this recipe. In fact, I nicked it off him. <laughs> um, but this is the, it's when you taste it from these chefs, they're, they're experimenting with different things. That's one of the joys about food in terms I of what, I, what mm. I do. The taste is amazing. Now, what are your, what are your thoughts on rice cones? Rice, rice cones. Well, only if you're doing if you're doing proper uh, chip and chip uh, fish and chip batter, then you would use rice cones. That that enacts as acts as a barrier from the fish to the batter, so which is fine. But this is much much lighter, so it's a very different way of different way of thing altogether. I'm going to go on and do the the jam. This is a really simple little jam. So you take the chilies. So we take the chilies. Mm. You can chop them up, and the jam itself is lovely and sweet. Um, and we use peppers at its base, so just with the peppers, but don't waste any of it. The only bit we're going to waste is just the green. The whole lot, seeds, the whole lot can go oh, in. Right. Yeah, don't waste any of it. In we go with the onion, that kind of stuff. And what you do is you just blend all this lot together. So you can start off in a blender. You don't need to finely chop it. You can even take the whole chilli, stick it in. It doesn't taste as spicy as it looks like it's going to be when I'm watching well, you make it. Well, because you're going to cool this down with a few bits of tomato. So you can take uh. tomatoes out of a tin or you can use fresh tomatoes. It's totally up to you. I like to use tomatoes when they're in season in the summer, which is really nice. But the tin tomatoes are really good. And then we got some sugar. Oh, my God. Didn't see that bit, did you? Well, I didn't, wasn't expecting it. Red I thought it wine. was like some little <laughs> salsa going on. Well, the sugar creates this beautiful sort of stickiness. Over a period and of time, that was red wine it. that just went in afterwards. Eh? And you can see you pop it in a pan, and what happens is you get this really sticky, sticky style jam. Yeah. Which you've had. Now you can, once you've made it, pop it into a jar, and it will keep really nicely. Mm -hmm. But it does this beautiful sort of stickiness. It is really nice. That's that one. The fish you just sort of leave in the fryer, really. You could just leave that cooking. It's going to take about another thirty seconds. That one. How hot is your oil? Very, very hot for this one. But look at the look at the prawns. There you go. We'll bring this across, look. Look at the prawns. If you just lift the lid off. And this has taken, what, three minutes? 
Oh, wow, 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 wow. Beautiful wow. prawns. Just salt and pepper when you season it with a little bit of sea salt as well. Oh, my God. It's just about the quality of the great ingredients. And the, but you can get them. They're just coming out of season now. So the ones that you get are probably frozen, uh, possible. We've had a bit of bad weather last week, but and now. So the fishing boats haven't been able to get out. So the, the demand for fish in restaurants is, is massive, but it's quite difficult to get hold of. Right. But if you can persevere and get them frozen, these are amazing. Um, yeah, these Milo prawns, you don't, you don't even have to peel them, really. No, I, I mean, also take the heads and then just... Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But, yeah. No, They're just you. delicious. But then what we did... Don't do that. No, I'll oh, That was probably mine. a bridge too far, was it, Hol? Just a bit, yeah. But look, you just take your nice little bit of the, the fish. I can't get over this batter. The batter's... Like, every, as I'm lifting it up on the underside that's been sat on this plate for a little bit as well, it's still crispy, crunchy. Well, well I, was, I was cooking that while, while you were spinning the wheel. That, mm. was, that was in, the, in there. And it's, t it's very, very light. And let's say I've got to thank Nathan Outlaw for this because he's, he's the genius fish chef. But obviously, the different types of salt. So when you're seasoning this, don't put sea salt on it, put table salt on it. Why? Because the sea salt will just fall off. Oh. And the sea salt goes well, on here. Isn't that the same with everything? Well, it is, but I, you season it right at the end. And I think with, with fish like this, just a little bit of table salt's really nice. Mm -hmm. Bit of watercress. And then what I've done to break down the sharpness, I've made a little aioli, which is roast garlic into a mayonnaise. And you just dollop that on the side. It's really, really good. But you see, all that's cooked in real time. Really, with a chilli jam. Chilli jam will probably take about sort of 20, 30 minutes just to cook down, but look out for these prawns as well. And you can do any fish inside that, not just mussels? Yeah, absolutely. Anything. Any fish, any shellfish, that kind of stuff. And Yeah, but anything like that. The batter's really light, but it doesn't keep. So once you've made it, fry it straight away. But remember, oh, the okay. gluten-free, if somebody is gluten intolerant, change the oil. Mixing the early with the jam is cool. amazing. Mm. But it's all about this amazing produce that we have in this country. Yeah, Thank absolutely. You. Um, James, absolutely thank you very wonderful. much. It's a pleasure. As always. Mm. Lucky absolutely us. stunning. Right, the details of today's recipe and more delicious ideas from our chefs. Download the free This Morning app.